to talk about that. I'm going to talk about farmer attitudes. I'm going to talk about a bit of psychology, like practices, you know, what's what's good, and management practice. Um, and I'm going to kind of wrap it up and talk about what are the kind of key things that, that summarize um, the drivers from a human perspective um, of successful businesses, um, which farms uh, also strive to be. So a bit of background about myself, I grew up on a dairy farm in Kerry and I spent a lot of time as a child doing the feeding of my father, so milking cows, moving cow shit around the place and all these kind of exciting jobs and my father was never a great one for communicating why I was doing this or why he was doing that and I always thought, you know, I could do it better, we should be doing it that way or we should be doing it that way and eventually I got frustrated left the farm, uh, went and studied plant science here at UCC, so getting a bit away from the cows. And um, and after that I went and I became a consultant in England working with dairy farms. And within the first few weeks of me working there, the managing director of the company came to me and said, Niall, uh, I've had farmer clients through the years and it's really bugging me. I don't know why when there's two farms with similar resources, similar number of cows, type of cows, etc., why one of them does very well and one of them is struggling to survive. And he'd just done an MBA and been studying on management and all these things. He said, now, can you do like a survey or something that will just kind of figure this out in three months and we'll just put it to bed and, you know, the company will understand why some farms are doing better and we can help the ones that are not doing so well. And that was the idea. Anyway, Six or seven years later, I was writing it up as my PhD, and I learned a lot along the way. So I'm going to try and share a bit of what I learned uh, doing that. So the first study we did was a bit of a, we were just talking amongst the consultants in the in the in the company, and we had to open a list of questions and ask about attitudes and behaviours and what they do relating to their farm business. And what we found was that associated with profitability was first of all, the farmers that said they were oriented to profitability were more profitable. So not very surprising. If they said their objective was to make money, they tended to make a bit more money. What was surprising, however, was that we found questions related to a kind of a psychology concept called growth mindset was also quite strongly related to profitability. So farmers that had this mindset which would be believing that people can improve through concerted effort and a deliberate effort tended to be a lot more profitable. So it might be easier as well to contrast that. The opposite of that is to say that no, people don't really change, you can't really improve. So if I've got an employee and he's very bad or not very good, he's probably not going to get any better. The consequence of that is I might not put much effort into training him up as well. The, al the alternative, of course, would be that yes, you're going to work with that employee and try and develop them. And the same with uh, regard to yourself. Do you think that you can improve and become better at things? Or do you think, well, I'm pretty good as I am, I don't really need to try any more to get any better, or I'm shit and I'm never really going to get better, so I might as well just wallow in that. <laughs> the other things that we found was that farmers had indicated that they felt proud when their cows were uh, happy and comforted were actually a lot less profitable than the ones that didn't feel proud. And this was surprising, obviously, we were surprised, and then that I was thinking about it, well, maybe the better farmers just always have their cows happy and comfortable. The fact that it was an achievement to feel pride in was actually a kind of a subtle counterintuitive indicator of that those cows may not always be as happy and comfortable as they should be. Um, and that may then uh, have a causal link into why they were less profitable. So the farmers that weren't keeping their cows happy, those cows may be more likely to be sick, less productive, and so on. So we were very happy with that. We thought, well, uh, we got some great results there about the attitudes of farmers who were associated with profitability. We also found that, to a lesser extent, if they had uh, an agricultural qualification, that they tended to be more profitable. Though there wasn't really a link to uh, age or experience or kind of what they did. So if they Say so the man specific management practices didn't seem to be as important as the attitudes. So we thought, okay, well, what do we do now? Maybe we want to go a bit deeper than attitudes. Maybe we want to start looking at personality. And so we did another study then, where we got a group of dairy farmers to fill out a personality inventory. So if you've ever applied for a job in a very large organization, they might ask you to fill out a very long form with many, many questions, and they'll assess you and put you under a microscope and see what makes you tick. 
and see if you're a good match for their company culture and the jobs that they want you to do. So we managed somehow to get a lot of farmers to do that because they usually don't have a lot of time and they don't really want to do these things. And we found um, some very interesting results. If anything, more interesting than the attitude side. So the, in psychology, the big part of the, the, the theory about personality is that there's five core traits, or the big five. And you can remember them by the acronym OCEAN. So these are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So the opposite of neuroticism would be emotional stability. And what we found was that uh, components of the conscientiousness uh, trait, so a subcomponent of that, um, which focus more on getting things done correctly and on time, but maybe to a lesser extent on time, but more to do it right and getting it done to a high standard. Farmers that scored high on this, on this measure tended to be an awful lot more profitable. In fact, we could predict maybe over 20% of the variation in profitability. Now that's a very large proportion of uh, or, uh, profitability to predict. When you consider the amount of research that's done on varieties of grass and cows and technology and tractors, all of those will have very relatively marginal effects on profitability. So there seems to be here this kind of, from the agricultural researchers' perspective, it seems to be before now that they, the farmer have been treated as a black box to work around, and we'll just figure, we'll, we'll study the tools the farmer has to work with, and if he can make, if he can use those tools or not, it's not really of interest. But we were finding that there could be some real value into looking at the farmer as a person and finding out what was associated with successful farmers. The other things we found in the in the personality study was that. And those that scored high on a measure called leadership was quite good. So those that tended to be, or were likely to be good at inspiring people or engendering enthusiasm in groups um, during times of change, and those were more profitable. And that wasn't surprising really, but it was, um, I guess, confirmation of what had been found in other contexts. I guess another finding was that farmers are quite similar to people. They're not the distinct species of a different species of people. They are the same findings that you find in occupational psychology elsewhere, but also generally applied quite well in farming. You'd be amazed how much farmers need to have research related to themselves before they take it seriously. Um, so anyway, the final thing we found in that personality study was that farmers that were more relaxed or reported being less stressed tended to be less profitable. So this was kind of disappointing, but it seems to indicate that the more wound up, more stressed, perhaps more uh, unhealthy from a psychological perspective, these farmers tended to be more profitable. So there seems to be a trade-off between being a successful farmer and having a good work-life balance or being, um, being healthy from a, from a psychological health point of view. So those were the main findings in my PhD. There was a few other things as well, which uh, maybe from the broader context which I didn't get to study myself, which I think kind of round off the picture. Um, the, in occupational psychology, if you want to hire someone or if you want to uh, improve performance, generally the, the biggest driver will be intelligence. And there's one or two studies that in farming would seem to indicate that holds true as well. But there seems to be a threshold effect. So uh, there's a big, big gains in performance as uh, say the, the person's intelligence goes up. And then it levels out after a certain point. Um, the other things were the importance of training and matching the training to the needs of the individual. So having training which might be designed for a large group of people, uh, the bigger the group of people it's designed for, the less value they'll get. Um, and so the role of maybe a mentor or someone that will get to know a person or know, get to know a business and work with them to develop tailored um, topics for training and development seems to be important as well. Going back to detail consciousness, um, I think a good example of this that's maybe you might have read about or heard about it, is the fact that surgeons, uh, when they're doing surgery, if you give them a checklist of what to do during a sur during a, um, during surgery, um, and they have to take it off at the end of it, there will be an awful lot less complications. So even surgeons, people who have people's lives in their hands and who are very highly trained and real doctors for those of us with PhDs and non, non, uh, non medical areas, um, 
they can benefit from a certain prompt, something related to detail consciousness, and um, the point as well to finish with that. So to illustrate that as well a bit further, I'm going to look through my own shit just to see if it covered off everything. I mentioned intelligence, that's good. Detail consciousness, leadership, yeah. Attitudes and beliefs, it's all very important, but less important than maybe the more superficial stuff, like what specific type of uh, management approach I take, whether I have a business plan, that kind of stuff. So it's the the people, um, I guess in any walk of life, it's the people and it's variation of people which will predict variation outcomes, and people maybe focus a bit too much on these other things, um, because the more superficial, easier to quantify things. And I know there's a bit of apprehension about talking about, say, maybe intelligence, because there's not much people can do about that. But there is things you can do about that with young children and education. And there is a lot to do as well, potentially, with if with your personality and detailed consciousness, there's um, a lot of potential to improve and maybe take a more evidence-based approach to that. And is that everything on my checklist? I think it is. I think I'm quite happy with that. So, uh, take any questions? No, I don't. Maybe um, uh, in in your study, could you see uh, differences between like smaller farms and bigger mm -hmm. farms, and how big were they? For example, that in bigger farms, people are, tend to be more stressed, or smaller farms. Um, I didn't look at that, no. We, we tried to account for size, so we took their farms, total uh, profitability, and then we divided that by their turnover to get a relatively size neutral perspective. Um, that is a good, um, good question, but we didn't actually investigate that very well. Um, I suspect that the, the smaller farmers will perhaps be uh, maybe more stressed because they're doing it all themselves, they don't have staff. Bigger farmers will tend to be maybe a bit more capable. They'll have taken on staff, they'll, but again, it's, if they go too big or, so they, they, they talk about farming about the point where you go from managing cows to managing people. And now a lot of people are very good at managing cows, they have no idea how to manage people. Um, and then, it's, it's like, a, you get promoted to one level above where you're, you should be in a, in a hierarchy as well. So it's similar. <laughs> Anyone else? Right, if there's no other questions, um, just thank you for speaking and sharing your research with us. Um, thank you very much. Perfect. Uh, just <laughs> <laughs>